So controlling uh, nitrogen and reducing its loss to the environment is no longer just an option. It's actually an obligation. Um, thanks, Andy, for your introduction. Um, as you said, my name is Glenn Judson. I'm the leader of a group called Nutrition and Farm Systems um, for the proprietary seed company, uh, Agricom. And over the next 15 minutes, uh, what I want to do is describe to you what I think is some game-changing uh, technology which has the potential to uh, soften the environmental, uh, environmental impact of our productive farming systems. It's not the only tool in the nitrate leaching mitigation toolbox, but it's an extremely useful one, it's extremely simple, it's natural, and most of all, it's very effective. Farming, I think, has, is changing and will, uh, will always be changing. But now, uh, it's not just about what we produce, but more about how we produce it. It's not about just protecting our environment, but maybe actually improving it. And it's not about just doing less harm, but actually uh, doing more good. And I think the largest challenge that we've got um, currently in our livestock systems is this loss of nitrogen from the productive system um, into the environment. And, and the reason that's a problem is because of the impact that's having um, on your environment, particularly around uh, water quality. It's not the only nitrogen, it's not the only thing that affects water quality. And we're aware that um, things like uh, phosphate, sediment, and E. coli also impact on that. But I think actually farmers are making uh, good progress in, in many of these catchments to um, help reduce the impact of those. So our riparian plantings and the fencing off of waterways has certainly made a difference in terms of the phosphate coal light sediment uh, are moving into those waterways. But actually in leaching, nitrogen leaching uh, is, um, we're not getting the same uh, uh, improvements in there. And that's because no amount of fencing or riparian planting is likely to help here because unlike those other factors, uh, nitrate does not move across the soil surface, it moves uh, straight down. And therefore, uh, because of the fence or because of the riparian planting, that certainly won't help. And when we realise that up to 90% of all of the nitrate that leaches out of a farm system comes from the urine patch, so it doesn't come from fertiliser application, it doesn't come from uh, spreading effluent, if we're doing that properly, it actually comes from the urine patch, that little puddle that accumulates behind the cow about uh, 19 times a day. And that urine patch is really important because if you take a dairy cow, for example, it's grazing about 140 square metres a day. And it dumps about 7% of all the nitrogen that it consumes into a urine patch that covers just 3 square metres. So there's a real concentration of nitrogen into that urine patch. And that concentration can be the equivalent of about 1,000 units of nitrogen per hectare. So it's a, it's a very uh, concentrated area. And the two things you need for nitrate leaching are areas of concentrated nitrogen, uh, like we're getting here, but also we need water moving through the profile. So, uh, I'm pretty excited to say that we've got another solution to help us control nitrate leaching from the urine patch. And it's something that we've called Ecotain. It is an environmentally functional uh, plantain. Now, plantain isn't new, um, and, and as a seed company, we've been front and centre of the development of this as a forage. Um, we've been uh, there doing work in terms of breeding, in terms of seed production, in terms of agronomy, in terms of getting it into farm systems as a forage. But what is new is the discovery that this is actually having a profound effect on uh, nitrate leaching from livestock systems. And what I want to do is take you through um, some of the science around how this works um, and talk a little bit about how we might deploy this on farm. So, uh, to, uh, in terms of understanding how this works, we've got to understand the nitrogen cycle and we've uh, simplified that. I'll just take you through that so you understand. So essentially we've got um, nitrogen joining, joining the soil ammonium pool from three uh, different sources. It either comes from nitrogenous fertiliser, we're applying, it comes from the urine patch from uh, animals and grazing deposit out, as I explained earlier, or it's coming from legumes which are fixing, remember this is 78% nitrogen, it's putting some of that in the ground. Uh, that joins, joins the soil ammonium pool and that um, largely is not leachable. Uh, because of the uh, difference in terms of uh, positive and uh, negative uh, charges here. Um, and plants can take this up. 
but the naturally occurring process is nitrification where uh, 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 ammonium oxidizing bacteria in the soil uh, convert this through to nitrate. Now this is because it's naturally charged, the soil chloride is naturally charged, is leachable and we can get uh, losses of this when we've got water going through the profile. Um, it can be taken up by plants um, and uh, the, uh, the cycle completed. Um, these can be removed from the system in terms of being milk. And the other thing that can happen is we can get some loss of this through gas, nitrous oxide, which tends to be a, um, a, not, uh, a greenhouse gas, uh, which is actually quite potent. So that, that's the nitrogen cycle. In terms of ecotane, we're working in this area in terms of the urine patch and in terms of this nitrification process. So that's, uh, that's where uh, we're operating. In terms of the way it works, uh, ecotain works uh, with four independent mechanisms to reduce nitrate in the urine patch, and we term those dilute and delay, uh, reduce and restrict. So if we, uh, if, we, if we talk about those, we'll go from the front of the animal to the back of the animal and we'll work out uh, how, those, how those are working. So first of all, we've got this reduced function that reduces the total amount of dietary nitrogen that ends up in urine. Okay, so uh, the amount of nitrogen going down the throat, we want to put less of that um, into, into the urine. Um, the nitrogen that does get in there, we want to mix with a whole lot more water to dilute that. So our dilution phase comes by putting more water into urine. We have a delay function, which means that in the urine patch, we've got some biological nitrification inhibitors, which slow that process of taking uh, ammonium and converting it into the electrical nitrate form. And then this restrict function down below is by physically growing these plants in the ground, we also affect the nitrification rate of the soil. So they are the four mechanisms just uh, go through those uh, uh, quickly now. So this work was done at Lincoln University. This is on dairy heifers. Uh, we're feeding uh, either ryegrass or uh, plantain diets, ecotain diets, and wheelie bins, um, so we can uh, feed them enough. Uh, but if we look at the numbers around that, uh, here's our pasture diet, um, eating about five kilograms, no difference between that and our ecotain diets. Our nitrogen intake is about 120 grams of nitrogen uh, going down their throat, no difference between that and that. Uh, at all, but when we look at the concentration of nitrogen in the urine for our pasture at 0.35, which is pretty typical of a pasture diet, when we look at the same uh, diet uh, coming from Ecotain, we get a, a huge reduction, less than half the concentration of nitrogen. Now, um, yeah, some of that will be the dilution mechanism, but if we look at the total grams of nitrogen, of that 120 grams, 65 comes out in the pasture, and only 40 grams of that 120 comes out in the echo. So we are essentially putting nitrogen in other places uh, rather than Europe. Now, if we truly do have a difference in partitioning, we should be able to demonstrate there's differences in the place of the urea concentration, and we can. So that's entirely um, consistent with the fact that we're actually moving nitrogen away from the urine um, and putting it in other places. So uh, here we've got this, this, this is the reduction. Now if we have a look at the dilution, the dilution uh, happens in two ways. Uh, first of all, we actually have quite a clever diuretic in this plant, which actually tells the uh, animal that it needs to increase urine volume by adding more water to it. And we also get an increase in urine volume by the fact that uh, ecotain tends to be uh, uh, lower in dry matter, higher in water content. So if you actually eat a kilogram of dry matter, you're actually eating more water. And that will also drive urine volume. Now if you put those two things together, uh, increases in urine volume and less nitrogen in there, when you go and do these, these experiments, you can't actually get your samples wrong because they are quite obviously different. Right? So on the left hand side is uh, animals that have been grazed in ryegrass. On the right hand side is uh, animals that have been grazed in ecotape. Now if you look at the small stuff, this is some indoor work. Um, if you want to take the analogy, uh, this is what happens uh, when you are out on a Saturday night. This is what your urine probably looks like. On Sunday morning when you wake up, it probably looks like this. Right. So, um, and that's all around um, the, uh, the urine uh, volume story. Now, the really, the, well, the really important point to note here is uh, all plantains are not the same. And some work that we've been doing recently, uh, this is the difference between a ryegrass um, and ecotain. But we can also show some differences between ecotain and other um, plantains, which we would consider that are un un environmental. So, we certainly see a difference in terms of the the um, uh, colour of that, but we can also see some very large differences in terms of the uh, nitrogen concentration. Of it. So this is for lambs that have been grazed in different um, uh, cultivars and breeding lines of plantain uh, that have been treated identically. We get these large differences in terms of the concentration of nitrogen because of the um, reduced function. We're putting less nitrogen in there uh, from an ecotain point, uh, point of view, and we're mixing more water with that. So we get uh, some quite big differences there. So that's the reduced and the dilute functions. The 
we look at the delay function, this is about biological nitrification inhibitors in urine acting in the urine patch. And this is some work that Plant and Food have done for us where we've applied uh, urine to soil colloids and watched uh, the increase of nitrate. So remember we're converting the ammonium to nitrate. Um, at the start of the period there's not much nitrate in there. We add the urine and slowly over time those ammonium oxidizing bacteria can ammonia or the uh, urinary nitrogen through to uh, uh, nitrate nitrogen. And you can see here for our ryegrass, that happened, the ryegrass urine that happens uh, pretty quickly and after 21 days most of that urinary nitrogen has been converted to nitrate. If you look at um, urine from animals that have been fed uh, ecotain, that build up is much more slowly because of the, the biological nitrification of this have actually had an effect on the ammonia and oxidizing bacteria the soil. So we get a, a much slower, a much lower build up. Um, and we do we get it in the end, so that we do get a conversion and we get it all in the end, but it's, a, it's much more slow. So that if you think about having a, um, a downpour or a very wet event 21 days after this urine patch was applied to the soil, um, what you would say is that for our um, urine from ryegrass feed animals, uh, all of that that hasn't been taken up by pastures is in the lecture form, uh, whereas for the um, uh, ecotain, uh, only about a third of that is available for electrical form. So we think this function of delay may be very useful um, in free draining soil. Um, so that's the delay. In terms of the restrict, this is about actually having plants in the soil and the effect on the um, ammonium oxidizing bacteria. And the way we, um, uh, and we're restricting the uh, nitrification process, the way we do this is using lysimeters. Now lysimeters are undisturbed columns of soil, which we basically dig into these round tubes. Um, we lift them up, we put them in our lysimeter pits, which allows us to uh, grow some things on the top here, um, uh, tip some urine in bits and pieces here, and measure what comes out the bottom. So uh, they're not perfect um, technology, but they are some of the best ways of looking at how um, nitrogen drains through a uh, unstored uh, soil um, column. When we do this, and I've just uh, used some, uh, 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 some cartoons of these um, lysimeters, uh, where we have lysimeters which have uh, uh, 42% ecotain, 20% Italian ryegrass, 28% white clover, and a bit of dead material uh, in uh, growing in our lysimeters. Uh, when we apply uh, normal animal urine to those, and uh, these plants, these ecotain plants, have been in there for about 12 months, so they are established. Uh, when we tip normal animal urine on that, we get a 45% reduction in terms of the um, uh, amount of nitrogen that leaches at the bottom of those simply because we've got these plants in here. So that's the reduced function, sorry, that's the restrict function that is um, at work here. Um, 45% reduction relative to if those uh, lysimeters had uh, perennial ryegrass white clover. Uh, if we actually, instead of just um, uh, putting on normal animal urine there, if we actually put on ecotain urine, which we know is less concentrated, uh, it's got less nit total nitrogen in it, and it's also got a biological nitrification inhibitor in the urine that's acting in the urine patch. If we do that um, onto the same uh, uh, lysimeter, we get an 89% reduction in terms of the amount of nitrate that leaches out the bottom of that. Now, uh, that's a relatively large number, but we've just had uh, confirmation that um, uh, independent bit of work has done exactly the same thing, and their number's 91. So, uh, some quite large uh, reductions in terms of the amount of nitrate that's uh, coming out of those. So, four mechanisms. We put less nitrogen in the urine, add more water with it. We have a delay function to uh, slow down that nitrification process in the urine patch uh, and also um, in, the, uh, in, the, um, in, in the pasture. So, this may be what um, pastures look like um, in the future. This is not going to be about adding a couple of kilos of ecotain to a pasture mix and you being done. This is actually going to take some effort in terms of uh, getting it into the landscape and keeping it in the landscape. Um, the nice thing is that um, plantain as a species is easy to establish. We can put this into our pasture mixes, we can direct drill it into um, running out stands, we can broadcast it onto uh, damaged pastures, so it's easy to get going. So, I just want to conclude and say, um, we, we now have an additional tool in the um, nitrate leaching toolbox uh, that is a simple tool, um, it's easy to uh, implement and it is very effective. We've been working with this species over the last 20 years, it's actually been out on the farm for that long, so it's actually not new. But what we've discovered in terms of the ability to reduce nitrogen 
the species may just become a vagina.